Canada, a country with beautiful landscape and friendly immigration policy, is one of the top destinations for highly skilled professionals around the world. It has seen record-breaking immigration over the last few years. Canada is experiencing record levels of population growth. Time in that year, Canada grew by 1.5 million people. It's the biggest jump, as you say, in all the G7 countries. But last year, the country also brought in a historic number of permanent residents, 430,000, up from 400,000 the year before. And professionals around the world are looking to move to Canada in hopes of achieving high living standards. And why not? After all, Canada is being marketed as land of opportunity where you can achieve your dreams. But is Canada really a land of fairy tales or are you being sold a fake promise? In this video, we'll explore if Canada is the right destination for the tech professionals around the world. Moreover, we'll be looking at the tech market analysis in Canada and advantages and disadvantages of moving to Canada. So if you are a tech professional or a prospective student looking to move to Canada, then this video will help you set the right expectation for your earning potential and cost of living. My name is Akash and for those of you who are new to the channel, I'm a software engineer working at Microsoft Canada. Tech professionals and software engineers are in high demand across the world. And obviously, they're highly paid and live a glamorous lifestyle. Students and professionals around the world aspire to move to Canada because of its favorable immigration outlook. Let's start off by exploring software engineering salaries in Canada. Software engineering salaries are mainly determined by three factors, skill, experience, and location. For example, if you have one to two years of experience, you would be considered a junior or an entry-level software engineer. Similarly, if you have three to five years of experience, you'll be considered mid-level, and if you have six plus years of experience, you'll be considered a senior-level engineer. Junior level software engineer in Canada make an average of sixty to eighty thousand dollars, whereas intermediate engineers have a pay range of eighty to one hundred and twenty thousand Canadian dollars. And senior software engineer tend to make anywhere between one hundred and twenty to one hundred and fifty thousand Canadian dollars as base salary. These numbers are surprising given Canada's proximity to the U.S. Because in the U.S. it is common for tech professionals to make astonishingly high salary. For example, entry-level software engineers can make as much as 100 to 150,000 U.S. dollars. And that salary is already on par with Canada's senior level band. However, software engineering salaries have one or more component associated with them. Numbers that we covered is often the base component of software engineer's salary. And this component often varies by location depending on the economic factors. For example, rents in Toronto Toronto and Vancouver are much higher compared to rents in Winnipeg and Calgary. Therefore, it is sensible that salaries in Vancouver and Toronto are much higher compared to salaries in Winnipeg and Calgary. Another economic factor that affects the base salary is supply and demand. And in Canada, due to high influx of migrants in recent times, salaries for software engineers have been stagnant. Let's look at the second component of the software engineering salaries, bonuses. Companies often use bonuses to incentivize employees to work harder. Bonuses are often in range of 10 to 15% of your base salary. And most companies in Canada do not even offer this component, especially for entry-level software engineers. For mid to senior level position, depending on the company size, it is very likely that you'll be provided with an annual bonus. Percentage of your bonus is dependent on three main factors, individual performance, department performance, and company performance. So there is a possibility to get a mediocre bonus even if your individual performance was good if your department did not do well or company did not make profits. And this was the case over the last couple of years due to high inflationary environment. And depending on your seniority, some companies can offer bonuses as high as 20 to 25% of your base salary but those companies are limited in numbers. And the last component of software engineering salary is equity. For those of you who do not know what an equity is, it is basically shares of the company. Companies will give you a fixed amount of shares or equity that rest over the duration of time. Meaning, if you choose to stay at the company for one year, then 25% of your equity will be vested. For two years, 50% and so on, depending on your vesting structure. Vesting percentages, equity structure and technicalities vary from company to company. Startup companies tend to provide higher equity compared to the large and established companies that are listed on stock market. Obviously, because the risk involved with owning a startup company equity is much higher compared to large or established companies. Because it is common that startups fail and when that happens, your equity becomes worthless. Owning equity can be real game changer as it can help you build wealth very quickly. For example, 
If your company does very well and stock price rise by 300%, then your equity value will rise by 300% as well. If you're an entry-level software engineer, most Canadian companies will not provide you with an equity component. Unless you're a highly skilled engineer and you start working at top tech companies such as Apple, Google, Meta, Microsoft, and Amazon, or you're working at a select few startups. Equities are mostly provided to mid and senior level engineers, and it provides incentive for engineers to work hard as companies' success would help them make significant gains on their equity. In short, if you're a software engineer in Canada looking to get a job, it would be ideal for you to target position that will provide you with all three components as part of your salary. If not all three, at least aim for base and a bonus component. And don't worry if you don't get high salary as part of your first job, you can always improve your skills and experiences to achieve your career aspiration. While we are exploring salary for the full-time position, let's also talk about contract positions. Generally, mid to senior level engineers are hired for contract positions and they often make between $70 to $110 an hour. I will not be covering the technicalities of the contract position in this video, but if you have any question, let me know in the comments and I'll try my best to answer it. One additional component of the soft engineering salary that we did not cover yet is benefits. Companies offer benefits such as retirement plan matching programs, vacations, skills and wellness benefits, insurance and free food. While most companies do not offer free food, it is still part of the additional benefits. Generally, private companies tend to offer a match of 3 to 6% of your salary if you choose to save for retirement with their group plan. And government companies tend to have defined pension plans. Most Canadian companies tend to offer between 15 to 25 days as vacation on a yearly basis. And you get about 10 days of sick leaves a year. And dental and pharmaceutical insurance is also covered as part of the benefits. Canada has government-funded healthcare and as a result, you do not need health insurance in Canada. Some companies also tend to offer between $500 to $1,000 a year as part of their skills and wellness benefit. Like the name suggests, you can use this money to buy an online course or do a certification to improve your skills. Or you can use this money to buy gym membership or equipment to improve your physical well-being. Lastly, select few companies tend to provide free food, but those companies are very limited in numbers. To know more about the salaries offered by Canadian companies, you can always use sites like levels.fyi, Glassdoor, or Indeed. These sites also contain additional information about company culture as well as historic employee reviews about the company. So to recap, Canadians are paid way lower compared to their counterparts in the US. Partly, the market is saturated with high supply of talent due to high immigration in Canada. While wages remain stagnant, inflation remains high in Canada. Now the question is, how is Canadian tech market in 2024? Let's look at the overview of Canadian tech market in 2024. In the year 2022 and 2023, tech market experienced massive layoffs across the world and the market is yet to fully recover. Getting an entry-level job in Canadian tech sector is difficult and given the advances in AI and high influx of talent in Canada, getting a job will continue to remain challenging task. My advice to entry-level engineer looking to get a job in Canadian tech sector is to build a good LinkedIn and GitHub profile along with good resume. While having internship or co-op will help you land your first job, Networking and skill also play a critical role in landing a job. Depending on the bank monetary policy, we might see more opportunities pop up during the end of the year. Here's the top industry sector that offer the most tech opportunities in Canada. Banks with companies such as RBC, TD, Scotia, CIBC, and BMO. Telecom sector with companies such as Rogers, Talos, and Bell. Insurance sector with companies such as Sun Life, Manulife, Great West Life, and Blue Cross. Startups and mid-sized companies, both based in US and Canada, for example, Shopify. Consulting companies such as BCG, CGI, and many other tech firms. FANG such as Apple, Meta, Microsoft, Amazon. Mainly, these opportunities are located around Vancouver and Toronto area. And Canadian government with agencies such as Stats Canada and BC Hydro and so on. In short, Canadian tech market is vast. And if you target any of this industry, there's a high chance you'll land your first opportunity in Canada easily. So given all this information, the main question is, can you survive on this salary in Canada? If so, what will be your living standard? For the purpose of this analysis, we'll be looking at average cost of living in city like Toronto or Vancouver. Let's assume you are a mid-level software engineer having an annual salary of 100,000 Canadian dollars. Here is how six-figure salary would fare in today's Canadian economy. Total salary is $100,000 that comes out to be around $8,250 a month. Taxes on this would be around $2,500. Yep, they're high in Canada. And good news is that you get good benefits such as free healthcare and other social safety net in return. Average rent for one bedroom is around $2,500 
and for two bedroom, expect to pay around $3,000 in Toronto or Vancouver. If you do end up living in Greater Toronto or Greater Vancouver, you will end up saving a few hundred dollars, but that will increase your commute time significantly. And if you're working in remote or hybrid environment, it might be beneficial for you to move in Greater Vancouver area or Greater Toronto area to save some rent. Also, if you're single, then you can choose to get a roommate to save even more for your future. Grocery cost for a family of two or three would be around $1,000. And for a single person, that cost would be anywhere between $300 to $500 mark. Utilities such as phone bill, electricity, internet, and water would be around $500. And if you own a car, it will cost you around $1,000 a month with insurance, loan, gas, and maintenance. $1,000 is for economical car. It would increase depending on the type of car that you get. So after all this expense, you are left with about $250 for your family. And we haven't even considered things like going out clothes, saving, and investing. So on a six-figure salary, living average life in cities like Toronto and Vancouver is hard. We have a very tight budget, despite having a high salary as per Canadian standards. However, if you are two working adults, life would get easy as you might be able to do the things that we listed above. And cost of living continues to go up due to inflationary environment in Canada. Our top story, the soaring cost of living with inflation hitting its highest point in nearly 40 years. We turn now to a story that may not come as much of a surprise. We're still paying a lot more for everything. Statistics Canada has released the latest inflation numbers for the country. So living on a six-figure salary in cities like Toronto and Vancouver will continue to get hard as you'll be expected to cut corners to save more. For example, moving to Greater Vancouver area or Greater Toronto area. Or like the Reddit suggests, moving to Calgary. Wait, what? Yes, that has been a popular take on Reddit that if you cannot afford to live in Vancouver or Toronto, then move to cities like Calgary or any Prairie Province city where the cost of living is more affordable. While that may seem like a good option, salary and opportunities offered in this city would be considerably less compared to any major Canadian city. However, depending on your situation, you might be able to save a little extra while compromising on certain aspects of your life. But more or less, the numbers should be same to what we have seen above. Catch is, if you're offered the same $100,000 position in Calgary, it would be no brainer for you to take that position because you'll be able to save more because rent and cost of living in Calgary is much lower compared to the major cities. With everything that we covered, I do not mean to discourage you from moving to Canada. Canada is still a great place to live given the situation around the world. And Canada will certainly provide you with high standard of living as a tech professional compared to most countries around the world. Some of the notable benefit of choosing Canada or US to have a stable and hassle-free immigration system. As a tech professional in Canada, it will be easier for you to get your permanent residency regardless of the province. And Canada will certainly provide you with an opportunity to build a life and prosper. However, it will be a daunting task given the economic environment and factors involved. And lastly, the social fabrics in Canada would be much better compared to the most countries around the world. You will be provided with free healthcare system, social safety net, and many other things. And of course, how can you forget the beautiful landscape of Canada? So, while establishing a good living as per the Canadian dream will be a daunting task, it will be the one that will be worth it. To recap, Canadian software engineers are paid way below their counterparts in the US, while cost of living remains too high. However, Canada does provide with an opportunity to immigrate and settle. And Canada provides better living standards than most countries in the world. While Canada has its own set of problems, the onus is on you to decide if the opportunities and risk of moving to Canada is worth your situation. And as always, if you found this video useful, please watch another video on my channel, it would really help me. And if you have any questions, please comment. I'll try my best to answer your comments. Thanks.